Hello friends, I'm back with another art video and this one is watercolor painting and my subject for this painting is, well it would help if I turn it up the right way, it's this beautiful red flower with a little purple opening bud down here and a little pink bud up here at the top and the first thing I have done already is to put my misket in the area that's going to be white and you can see that in the photograph and while that's drying I'm going to go ahead and wet my paper and I'm going to wet everything down to here and around my flower and down to uh, a certain point in here so that I don't have to go over all of this at this point. It's a bit too tedious. Now I have two containers of water, one to rinse my paint and one for clean water. I have done my drawings so far and one of the difficulties in choosing a subject like this is all of the, the leaves and the stems. So I'm going to try very hard to um, eliminate those and to create uh, more of the illusion of leaves than actual leaves. So it's, it's kind of important to get a good line of demarcation by choice so that I don't actually have to go back and make any changes. So for now, that's all the wetting I'm going to be doing. And although I'm putting my water all the way over here, I'm not going to be putting my color in here, but I don't want to risk having my paint flow too far. And none of this has to be extremely precise. But I think I'm going to have a purple background. With some green to carry that illusion of the leaves when I need to. And you'll notice, since my paper is attached to a tablet, that when it does start to buckle, it's going to carry my paint in areas that I don't necessarily want them to go. But I'm using um, a cool blue for this background because I'll be using a warm green, excuse me, a cool green. So that will not conflict. Now at this point, I'm going to make sure that these leaves don't get any of that green on them. And you know, this, uh, this style is really a matter of personal preference. Some people like very tight watercolor paintings and others like very loose. And 
I would say mine is somewhere in between. But I just don't want to go too far with my background color at this point. So I'm going to keep wetting it. And you can hold this paper down with the point of your brush. You notice I've, I've done somewhat the detail on these leaves, but because I don't intend to actually paint them all in, I didn't find it necessary to draw them all in. This is just going to give me an indication of where to go. photograph over here as my reference points. Okay, now for my hooker's green, which is much, much cooler. This is going to be the reference for my lighter leaves. Now I'll do some negative painting to get to the shadows and some of the darker areas. And that's another thing that's really a personal preference. Um, that is where to begin with an area like this. And I prefer beginning with the light over everything and then darkening some areas as I go along. Just seems to work better that way. Now I'll do the negative painting in the areas where the leaves aren't. It's perfectly acceptable to leave part of it, as long as you fade it out. You don't want to take any chances of those demarcation lines, hard lines. I'm going to go back and Put some more areas of dark, darker color here. And the one thing that's really nice about watercolors is, is this movement. There are lots of surprises along the way with watercolor. Sometimes you just want to let it have its way, and other times you want to want to guide it, and in this particular case, um, I want to make sure this paint flows back in this direction. And as long as it's wet, you can manipulate it a bit. And this is going to dry lighter. It's the nature of watercolor paint. Okay, we have our background done. And as you can see, the color has dried lighter. Um, and it has some dark areas. That's good. Um, it has a, a line here, but that's fine because it's going up next to another shape. Okay.
Okay, now let's see if I find my brush. I'm going to work on the flower now. Um, I have covered the white areas, which are right here, the white areas around here with my misket, and I'll handle any area that needs to be darker once I take it off. So we're going back now to work on the flower. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before, but I'm going to work on one petal at a time so that my water doesn't dry so fast. And I'm just, um, just going over those areas with the water first. Now there's another way to do this and I'll, I'll show you on another petal. But in this case, I'm going to eliminate some of the water so it doesn't bleed too much. But um, based on my photograph, this leaf is going to be pretty much um, one color, but it is a little darker on this side. So, um, using my cadmium red medium, I'm going to start on this darker side. And because I have water on this, that paint is only going to go where the water is. So on this particular layer, I'm going to worry too much. about where the color is going to go. Because this particular value is going to be right because of the fact that the color is so bright, such a brilliant red, that I almost can't get it too dark but I am going to move everything slightly over to the side so that it will ultimately dry darker on this edge. And remember that shadows and highlights have shapes, so if you're you're paying attention to the shape that you're trying to emulate. You'll come closer to a real depiction of your subject. And of course, for some people, that is not even an issue. My light is changing over here, so I'm having a little bit of difficulty seeing my photograph. But this area that is under, let's see, under this leaf is going to be dark. Let's see. And you almost need a road map, maybe even a GPS to figure out what's going where, but I'm going to locate myself by choosing one of these. Petals. Now this is that other way I was mentioning where you put the color down first and then you bleed it out. Maybe bleeding out is not a good description when we're talking about red paint. But anyway, you get you get the point. Unlike this edge up here, on this petal, I'm going to be a little bit darker underneath the petal above it. So let's just go ahead and move that paint up there. And right now, there is no need for me to um, 
what we might call sopping it up. Maybe that's a southern term, sopping it up, unless it continues to run too much downward. And then we might have to. I'm just barely tapping that. I don't necessarily want to change the shape. Okay, and we want to go now to another area so as not to interfere with this petal and cause it to bleed in. We have a little shape right in here, which is darker. Just going to follow that. I'm going to drop my color in here. Now, insofar as the brand of paint I'm using, most of my paints are Windsor Newton. few odd brands in here, but since they've been on my palette for so long, I have no way of knowing. So I typically wash out my, um, excuse me, empty out my tube each time so that when when I go back several years later, which is in this case has happened this time, I don't have the tubes. But this little palette up here has fresh paint in it just from the last few months. So um, I can say with assurance that most of those are Windsor Newton. A couple are Liquitex. And I really think you kind of have to experiment. I've heard a lot of different artists talk about which ones are best. Oh, that's nice. I love it when that happens. It's a little bit gory, I might add. You can see what's happening here. I do like red, however. If you've watched my mixed media, the way to salvage watercolors that have gotten too dark, and, and that can happen because the best way with watercolors is to build them up in layers. That way you don't have any, any issues. Drain a little bit of this red off. See how that dried nicely here with just a little bit of a dark edge. When I do the next layer, it will be even more pronounced, but okay, now we're going to have an area underneath. You see that other petal is not quite dry, so it's getting a little bit of a seeping effect. And I really didn't want that. So what I'm going to have to do is um, dry it up. Dry that. Sorry, I 
put my brush in my mouth. You shouldn't do that. You can't talk with a brush in your mouth. So let's go back over here. And so this petal is going to be straight here. And it comes out and makes makes a little little drip. She loved my terminology. establishing everything at this point because as long as they're just pencil lines it's a little bit difficult to follow them This is going to be a light area in here, and it's really okay for it to run into the other petal because um, I won't be going back over it very much. One thing I say in just about every video that I do um, in regard to painting is that um, these um, petals have shapes and shadows and the shadows have shapes and it's always a good thing to think of them in terms of shapes rather than petals. And the miraculous thing that happens when you treat them like shapes is that when it's finished, it looks exactly like what you wanted it to look. And no one is much confused. Okay, that was dry, but that is not. So um, I think I can work on this petal over here. This triangular brush makes some wonderful shapes. See when you put it on its side like that, it gives you <clears throat> some wonderful, um, wonderful shape. And it's really good for in larger areas because you have a nice flat shape and for dry brushing it's wonderful. You don't really have to have very many brushes with watercolor painting unless you want them. And then of course you have as many as you like. So you notice I haven't picked up any paint recently. I'm just working with what's in my brush. So the brush holds a lot of paint. One brush that I've just discovered, which I like very much, which I look forward to using if I ever do any sketching on a trip, if 
um, outdoors and I don't want to carry everything I own. And that is this reservoir brush. And I like it because it holds water for one thing and you can just squeeze the water out right where you're working. But it has a nice sharp point and it's great for details. And then you can use it on its side and it's good for a broad stroke as well, especially when you're working in small areas. And a lot of sketches are just that, they're very small. And I think since I'm going to have a darker area under this other petal, I'll just move that color up there, the side of the brush. And then I'll dip a little bit. Create that shadow place. just some plain water to this because I want a lighter area right through there. I think one of the secrets to this particular method in watercolor is um, knowing how to control the water and the paint. Some people don't mind those hard edges as I've said before, but um, if I'm going to do this particular technique, I don't want them to show. This petal has some highlight and low light areas that are pretty significant. They have those shapes I was talking about. Just remember to keep your Keep your petal wet. While you're working on it. This is actually two petals. There's a petal that comes under here. And then there's actually another little petal underneath. I'm going to go ahead and put down some ground color for that. 
and let it be drying. Some people do watercolors um, on an easel, whether it's one in which you have to stand up or a tabletop easel, and those are fun, for sure. It's really anything you want to do, but um, I enjoy sitting down for a change. Watercolors are a little more tedious, therefore they require a little bit more concentration. And you don't stand back as much, especially with a small painting like this. The one thing I do when I'm starting to wind down, especially on a painting, I will photograph it and post it online on Facebook and then um, I can get a better perspective on it and, and it's nice to get feedback from my friends on Facebook so that's always a good thing too. I'm a typical artist in that I need an audience whether it's to see my paintings or read my books and whatever, whatever the case may be. I like the subtle changes, whether I'm working in watercolor or in oils. I like the subtle changes that happen in nature. And I love being able to duplicate that in some way. I'll fold that down, although I did put tape around it because this is very thick watercolor paper and um, it's going to do that no matter what. So over here, I want that to flow in another direction because I want the darker area to be over here, although I will have another, another layer of paint on there. Okay, so I want it to go there. some of this paint up so I won't keep running over there. Same is true over here because the shadow is actually right under these two petals. Some of the shadow areas may even involve a little bit of purple. I mean, my painting wouldn't be finished without purple. Because I'm a purple-holic. 